This week on Checkpoint. There was nothing much I could do as I did in Excel in, uh, in mathematics, let me say. Travel agent Letlokhonola Smale blames his bad maths and lack of business acumen for what his accusers say was blatant fraud. Tlokhi o tla bua ntweng o leng mo fela gore a itlhakole le bitso. Ha ntle ntle ke hlokometse gore ke motho ya lishano. More of his alleged victims speak out. O o romela o ka re o transfer ile tshelete and then was screenshot go re tshelete ke ye e tenge ga ya gapetsa selong ke ga re bontsha no ke na le tshelete ke ye e tlo tswa mo account ni tsene but we saw gore this guy o o hlala ka gona. Whether they will ever get their money back seems unlikely. Smale remains a free man despite mounting allegations against him. And what do you have to say for yourself? I need the motor. This is Checkpoint, and I'm in Kepile Mabuse. Travel agent Letlhonola Smale and his company BST Adventures are accused of swindling clients out of hundreds of thousands of rands, promising trips of a lifetime that never materialize. Checkpoint first exposed Smale in May. After our initial broadcast, we found out much more money was involved as more people came forward to tell their stories to producer Tsohofazo Mokhlejo and cameraman Ashley Market. And after initially turning us down, Smale eventually decided to grant us an interview, during which he did not cover himself in glory. My first encounter with Little Honolulu Smiley was uh, through a friend of mine um, who is employed, was employed uh, with BST Adventures. Lebohang Tema from Isterist, east of the capital Pretoria, says she too was taken for a ride by Little Honolulu Smiley and his BST Adventures travel agency. A friend of hers was working for the company when she decided to use their services. She would do most of their marketing and um, advertising for their trips on her social media pages. So I came across uh, one of the um, adverts and I was interested in um, going on that particular trip. It was a holiday to the land of many faces, Namibia, costing 7,000 rand for four days. I wanted to go on the trip because it was in a, in a country that I've never been. I think it's important that we expose ourselves to um, other African cultures, uh, other African traditions. But sadly for Tema, the only spot she managed to secure was on a list of the many clients who accused Smale of fraud and theft. While he initially refused to grant us an interview, six days after our original broadcast, Smale contacted Checkpoint, saying he was ready to come clean. I wouldn't want to be perceived as an animal in public, as a bad person in public. It's near impossible for him not to be perceived negatively when over a hundred people claim he disappeared with their money after promising vacations of their dreams. Dimaka Zolinong chairs the Tourism Committee at Yachiso Care for the Aged, or KCA, in Krugersdorp, west of Johannesburg. The group of 60 pensioners saved their grants to fund a trip to Cape Town in November last year. By September 2019, they'd raised and paid 225,000 rand into Smale's business bank account. Their much-anticipated trip to the mother city never got off the ground. They say Smiley disappeared into thin air. I've had sleepless nights. Um, we had a bit of a challenges. So let me say the company went into challenges in September. Um, September 2019. Yeah. It's only at the later stage that I realized um, We've been operating at a loss 
or not in fact as a loss is it was most of the people who paid because I had some support staff who were assisting me and I was always away on trips. I couldn't, what can I say? I couldn't tell you, I didn't take the time to sit down and look at the balance sheet of the company. Smale blames the fact that he's bad at maths for failing the pensioners. 225,000 rent was paid to your account and still that money wasn't enough to take them to Cape Town. No, no, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Like basically, let's say 2019 trips were a big, big um, challenge when it comes to, when it came to booking, like the figures were not correct. Um, and on my side, there was nothing much I could do as I did in Excel in, a, in mathematics, let me say. It's Smiley's claim that on the 9th of November 2019, the pensioners from KCA's children went to his house in Krugersdorp demanding that he reimburse them. Close to 20 people came in different cars to my place. They were screaming and shouting. He says when he didn't refund them, they took his laptop, iPad and USB sticks, as well as other belongings, resulting in him being unable to arrange the trip. I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything. Everything was taken. Utter nonsense, says KCA chairperson Dimagato Lenong. Number one, I don't even know who the nine in Young women Sun City, Checkpoint located the Kolani Burial Society who confronted Smale about their trip to Sun City. Mutlati Kumala says she was present on the day that Smale's belongings were taken. The pensioners had nothing to do with the incident, she says. <laughs> Further confirmation that Smiley knew exactly who had taken his equipment is that he opened a criminal case against members of the Kalani Burial Society. On January 8th this year, the Gakiso Regional Court ordered that the society return this list of property belonging to Smiley, which included a gas heater, microwave, decoder and Apple Watch by no later than the following day which they did. Kumala says Smale owes them 13,500 rand for the aborted Sun City trip. Then we decided, since then we cannot have a fun whilst another member is still. So we decided, okay, go and go cancel a trip. So we go go and he agreed to go and then situation how to recharge a penalty now because they cancel. I don't know because of the cancel to some Thirteen thousand five hundred was a deposit paid in June. The total quote for the entire trip was eighteen thousand. And then more break breakdown and in include a transport accommodation and uh, the speed boat do more and then the entrance go value of the weeks. She says they confiscated Smiley's belongings after multiple attempts at getting their money reimbursed failed. Get on a lot of frustration and how or mela or transfer the chalet and then was screenshot or a chalet a key a thing a raya happens as a long carry bonds and no just like the pensioners at KCA, Dema is still reeling from the financial setback caused by Smiley. To be honest, I was blindsided. Like, I wasn't aware at all that this was going to be my fate. Smiley told Checkpoint Dema's trip fell through because she was the only one who'd paid and the destination she'd chosen was not in demand. Please refund me my money back and the other people that you've done wrong. That one, that one, she's, she's first on my list. She's first on my list as soon as everything is sorted. Like, she, she's the first, first one on my list. It should be best because she was the only one who was supposed to.
to go on the extreme. Next, Smiley struggles to explain what he did with the more than 200,000 rand he took from pensioners. Uh, the money, what happened, it was basically for company operations. Uh, was it not supposed to be to organize their trip to Cape Town? Why did you use it for company operations? No, I didn't use it for company operations as such. Of all the alleged victims Checkpoint has spoken to, the amount paid by the pensioners was by far the largest. We wanted to know from little Honoris Male what he did with their money. What exactly did you use that money for? Uh, the money, what happened, it was basically for company operations. Uh, was it not supposed to be to organize their trip to Cape Town? Why did you use it for company operations? No, I didn't use it for company operations as what such. Some of the bookings for? were done. But like we, there what? was a Where shortfall for book? accommodation. Where I'll, did you book? I'll show you the proof. I've got it on my phone. All um, right. Where did you book? At uh, Cape Town Onomolax Hotel. But we called Onomo Hotel. They said the last time they spoke to you was when you inquired about the quotations. OK, no, that can be true because I've got the opposite on me here. Smale told us he has a business arrangement with Onomo Hotel in Cape Town. But in the statement to Checkpoint, the hotel denied being affiliated with Tlohonolo Smiley, stating that there has never been any involvement whatsoever. Smiley says the reason the hotel didn't have his reservations in their system was because he used a different booking method. Like there's a certain portal that I use to do bookings. But, I mean, you should say that it's for BST Adventures, right? Yeah, I should so say it's for BST Adventures, but... Most of the time is not, um, I have to protect the bookings because of... How? From what? From sabotage. Sabotage from who? You know, let me tell you something. Um, this company, me opening this company didn't make a lot of people happy. Smiley sent us this screenshot as proof that accommodation had been secured for the pensioners. He advanced yet another reason why the trip didn't happen. He claims it's because they had not paid him in full. A month before the trip. Now, before the end of September, the 20th of September, the rumor Then we did not pay in that money. The confirmation of the bookings. Smiley's accusers say the police have done little to assist them get justice. Coming up, Smiley admits he messed up by failing to secure a trip for preschool kids whose parents paid him 90,000 rand. Yeah, that one, that one, it was a blunder. Mm, that one, it was a blunder to such an extent that the amount that they paid, it couldn't cover the peak season holidays. Was it a blunder from their side or yours? Uh, it was a blunder from the company's side. In our May episode, we also brought you the story of Elsin Gomo from Burgess Werp Early Childhood Development Centre, also in Krugersdorp. She and parents at her school gave Latahonola Smiley of BST Adventures 90,000 rand for a trip to sunny Durban. Why We asked Smale why this vacation too didn't materialize. Yeah, that one, that one, it was a blunder. Mm, that one, it was a blunder to such an extent that the amount that they paid, it couldn't cover the peak season holidays. Was it a blunder from their side or yours? Uh, it was a blunder from the company's side to say we overlooked the peak season holiday. So the peak but, season... But you've been in this industry for years. How come you are not able to foresee such um, 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 incidents? 
No, I delegated the the responsibility to the staff I was working with, but not to put blame on them. But the thing is, the way I was con so consumed with trips, that thing to say that date or that weekend was a peak season, it would have not been feasible for 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 the trip. So but how come you didn't know that it it was going to be peak season? I mean, this is your company. You should be able to know. Yeah, that's correct. I delegated, I was not the only director on the company, I delegated other directors to say, can you please sort this one out while I'm still busy? So you were not involved in, in your operations of your company? No, not full time, because I was always on the road. I was always, most of the time I was out of the country, Mozambique and all Namibia and all that stuff. He says he didn't inform Ngomo that he was facing challenges with their Durban trip because he wanted to source additional funds from his suppliers. If you were sourcing funds from other um, aspiring travellers to try and fix the problem that you had already created. No, no, it was it was a different matter altogether. It was we had I had to source funds from our companies that were owing us. Smiler says the actual cost of the Durban trip was 280,000 rand. He says he planned to fund the 186,000 rand shortfall out of his own pocket. Does that make viable sense to you? Yeah, for me it makes viable sense because I, I didn't go into business for profitability as such. The main time I started this company was to say other companies are charging 10,000 to go to Durban. And then for me, I made it a possibility for all these years for people to go to Durban for even, let's say, 1.5 or something. So it was not about money for me. It was like to say, I need people to be happy. Uh, I need to make kids happy at but the end. But you couldn't make the kids from Beggar's Hoop Early Childhood happy? Yes, I couldn't. I need some more And what do you have to say for yourself? I couldn't make the kids happy and to me it was a major disappointment. Um, I remember on the day they were supposed to leave, I did go to Beggar Swoop. I drove past there, I saw all the kids with the bags and all that stuff and all that stuff. And in the boot of my car I had all the files, all their bookings and say, suppliers, don't fail me now. Like, I need to take these people. We asked Smale whether he'd paid for the Greyhound bus that he told Ngomo had been secured. I hadn't paid the bus based on the assurity that I got from the people who were supposed to pay. I gave them all the account details to say this is the amount to pay. Uh, and then the buses are going to run out because that day Greyhound was quite busy. Based Why on... didn't you call a Greyhound to, 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 to get assurance that indeed they had... Uh, received your payment? No, I couldn't call because of that time I had so many things to do. Like for me, it was like the only call I was expecting it was to say, okay, um, we have paid the bus, we have paid who and who and all that stuff. Had you that paid was... for, accom for the accommodation in Durban? No, for the accommodation, I only had the proof of my invoice. The rooms were secured and all that stuff. Smale claims some of his monies are stuck with the hotels where he'd made bookings. How about requesting refunds? I couldn't request the refunds because of the money is already paid and then to get the money back, it's a hassle. When um, are you paying them back? They want their money back. For now, because of the people who took my computers November and December, they literally destroyed my company because I couldn't do anything. I lost millions during those two months. You know, for me as as a person who went to a not so normal school, I would say I achieved a lot, but at the same time it had shown me to say, it means some of us who've ever, who have attended a certain phase of school, it means this thing, it was, meant, it was not meant for us. It's like, obviously I can't be clever enough to, um, to run such a big empire and all that stuff. But at the same time, it was like the jealousy that came with all these things, it was like all the bad things, it was not caused by strangers, it was caused by people who are known to me, who knew uh, how I grew up, what I was doing and all that stuff. 
It's been over nine months since the first case of fraud was opened against the Tokonola Smile at Kahiso Police Station. We asked provincial spokesperson Captain Mavela Masondo why the investigation was taking so long. As I said that the suspect was arrested a week after the matter was reported to us. So we're able to trace him that time and arrest him. Yes. So it's just that when, you are, when the case was taken to court, the senior public prosecutor decided not to enroll. This was due to a lack of supportive evidence. The senior public prosecutor needed a proof to that effect, now from the bank, from the account, so that we can see that you know, these uh, transactions. You see. So that was not something that uh, was going to happen within a, within a week. So, but the other thing that we, that, that, that came forth, or that the investigating officer is encountering, is that some of the people now that is supposed to stay, take statement for, they are not cooperating. Because now it's during the lockdown. When we spoke to you in March, you had said that you foresee that this case would be concluded in the next two weeks. And this was in March. Why didn't this happen? As, uh, as I'm saying that there are more people that came forward. So this is after our interview uh, with after you? After our discussion, there are more people that came forward to, com to, to have the same uh, complaint or to complain about the same uh, suspect. But put yourself in their shoes, having been defrauded, for example, the pensioners at KCA were defrauded 225,000, which is a lot of money for pensioners. How would that make you feel to see someone who have defrauded you walking freely mm. and going about their lives as if nothing has happened? No, no, I understand what we are saying. And we also understand the frustration from the, from the complainants but we are appealing to them that please let them bear with us. What do you have to say to the people that you owe money? I truly apologize. I can't I can, uh, have pride and say, uh, okay, it happened, it happened. That thing ate me for months to say, I failed the people who had faith in me. Uh, I failed all the stuff that I had. I failed. Basically, it was a big disappointment. Everything failed.